Hi, After Buzzers. You're watching the After Buzz TV After Show for Containment, Season 1, Episode 11, Nothing Gold Can Stay. Join us as we break down the episode and give you our thoughts and predictions. Stay tuned. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. This heartbreaking episode, this song is perfect and fitting because it's yes. a song on the show. Yes. Oh my gosh, heartbreaking. I'm your host, Katie Campbell, and you can find me on Twitter at Katie E. Campbell, that's Katie with three E's Campbell. And joining me across the table, Gabriel Gonzalez over there. Hey guys, you can find me on Twitter at double G on TV. How are you I'm doing? You know what? I'm a little worried. We're Why? getting close to the end, and just like in containment, there's less of us than when we started. I know. It's just like the show. Yes. You guys may have noticed we are missing Tiana and Yvette, so yeah. make sure you send them your love and uh, yes. tell them what you thought about the episode. And I really and hope Dr. Kennard finds a cure for them. You know. For Yvette and Tiana? Yeah. Mm, me too. You me know, too. they got to get out of that cordon. I'm glad I'm on the outside. <laughs> it looks brutal in there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thank ahead. you guys for tuning in each week and, and leaving comments and tweeting us. We really appreciate it. We love to hear your thoughts. And yes. if you are not subscribed to us on YouTube, please do so. That is youtube.com slash AfterBuzzTV. And you can also find us on iTunes and SoundCloud. Give us that five-star thumbs up, leave a comment, and tweet us using the hashtag ABTVContainment. Tell us how sad you guys are about this Katie storyline. Yeah, and Julie Plague didn't help the, the matter with, um, you know, she said uh, that one of the few decisions that came into contention was this song that they played at the mm -hmm. end of the show this week. And she said she got to have the final say and she chose we got it. this one that uh, just makes it all the more heartbreaking. I know. I love Julie. Yes. Standing by her decision. This song is it's a beautiful song. It is. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about Katie and, mm -hmm. and this whole process of her death slowly, this yes. episode. Um, I really I'm, I love how Jake was really eager to go to Canards for help. And yeah. he wanted to, you know, let's give her what, let's just try it. There's yeah. no harm in trying it at this point exactly. because she is dying. And it, so it's passive immunization, right? Yeah. Yes. So what exactly is the whole thing with that. Canards is trying to slow it uh, down. That's what I assumed. You know, the same way that when you get cold, when you catch common cold, obviously it's more serious, but you know, there's, you can help the symptoms, but it doesn't necessarily make you healthy. Only your body can do that when it produces the antibodies, which they thought Thomas had. Obviously he didn't. So right. I think they said this was more way to just maybe keep her healthier longer, but it was never going to stop the clock, so to speak. Okay, what can they? They can't give anybody his blood, right? That just rejects it because his blood is infected. He just knows how to fight it. Exactly. So, okay. um, yeah, asymptomatic. I don't know. I mean, you have to ask a doctor that question. Right. I just know it just means that, like, let's say you had the flu, and um, you didn't know. Let's say you share water, even though you weren't sick, you got someone else sick, and you know it just looked like you were healthy the whole time. Yeah. That's interesting. All of that is so interesting. I love that Katie wanted to try it, though. Yes. I would, too. Yeah, definitely. I think um, what I love about Katie, and I talked about it at the end of last week's show, is that she's just so brave mm -hmm. and so nice. And we saw everything we love about Katie on display this week. And that's what gave everything such more of an impact because, you know, we were feeling it and we want so much for her to make it. Mm -hmm. And everything was just so dramatic this episode for I her. Know. And she is so strong. She's, you know, she's even, she battled with the drug yeah. addiction earlier on in her life. And yes. she didn't even want to have the pain medicine. Although her outcome didn't even look that strong. Looked like she was dying. She kind of was coming to terms with it. And she still didn't want to, you know, give in to her previous demons. She's just, she's very strong. No, definitely. And um, Kristen Gatoski talked about it, just uh, her struggle with mental illness and, um, I really wish they had explored that a little more just because uh, from what I know, the people who struggle with it, when you fight that and overcome that to be a strong person like Katie was mm -hmm. portrayed on the show, you become so strong mentally. And I think we saw that, you know, we saw her, it, you struggle to keep your composure and mm -hmm. um, seeing that and seeing Katie still be so strong, it's just made everything that much 
um, more impactful to the viewers. And I really liked how they did everything mm -hmm. tonight. Yeah, and the way she even talked with Q, with, with her son about, you know, not blaming Thomas, because it's so easy yes. to just go there. And he's a kid, and all he knows is that, yeah, Thomas is his friend, but he kind of infected it's Katie. Crazy. It was th through, you know, the other little girl, and then to Katie, but he just wants to put that blame somewhere. It's hard yeah. to lose your mom. He's 11 years old. Yes. But she helps him and reminds him it's not his fault, you know? It could easily be her fault as well because she brought them onto this field trip. field trip. Yeah, she brought them there. I mean, essentially, it's nobody's fault. Yes. Well, well maybe <clears throat> llamas or something going it's on a, there. It's about damn time <laughs> I got some backup on this issue. I know, I'm finally Claudia, on your team where over are here. here. I want to rematch in the staring contest. <laughs> Love Claudia Black. I don't know about the Lammer situation, though. This fun. character that she plays, not mm -hmm. happy with her. So I love, too, that Katie kind of, she wants to be harsh with Canerts as well. Mm -hmm. And she's she's telling him to be brave and, you know, admit what you did was wrong. Admit the things that you did that were wrong. Yeah. I mean... He defended himself quickly too, and and said, "He okay." So he said that his mentor was Dr. McIntyre, which is Lawmer's husband, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and he was working with him on some stuff, and his wife started calling, which is Lawmer's, asking for help because two people were exposed. Cannard said Saeed's name. Mm -hmm. He said, "Okay, so a third person might be infected as well." And Saeed, so she decided to say, "Just call him Patient Zero. Yes, and spin that for the public. So, uh, well, obviously we see now what makes um, Dr. Lomers and so much uh, those periphery characters. McIntyre, we barely got introduced to him, but we already have pegged him as the mastermind behind it. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, I wanted a little more out of that, to be honest, because it's like, so you just did, you went along with it, you knew. And um, we there's, some, there's something left to Dr. Cannards. Remember, I... It felt like we're setting up for the finale next week. We're not there just yet. We right. have a few more secrets before, you know, we finally get something epic, I think, in the end. So, obviously, you know, reason number 101 why I don't like Sabine mm -hmm. Lomers. I mean, th that, but I think um, more to the mystery finally solved. Yep. I really like that we finally got there. I feel like if we had the season two with this show, they would go more into exploring that whole situation and okay. how that came about. Because I still, I want to know more as a viewer. No, definitely. Um, with, there's some, I mean, contained season, limited series. Mm -hmm. But what I would take to assume is, okay, obviously the Atlanta situation, there might be something going on somewhere else that we just are not aware of. Right. You know, we might find out that Dr. Lomers or Cannards have done some work somewhere else and they kind of took care of it. So who do you think is more, you know, to blame? Is it Dr. McIntyre or Lomers, husband or wife, or is it equal? You know what? I guess it would, it's uh, how you prefer to skin the cat in this case. McIntyre, if he was the one directing the project, you could say, well, it started with you. All mm -hmm. of it starts with you. So put him there. If Dr. Lomers knows and is, you know, helping him and becoming a voice to help cover it, McIntyre's not out there doing press. It's Dr. Lomers. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, you know, just because I like to throw Sabine under the bus, I'd say, you know, Sabine is really enabling so much more. Whereas McIntyre, technically, he just went along with Sabine's plan. Right. Well, we have McIntyre, too, saying to, to Cannerts as well after the whole press conference, which we'll get to talk to that, talk about that in a little bit, but he said, you know, I'll help you, I'll help clear your name. I feel like that was shady and that was just a, a lie. Yes, I think so, too. Um, McIntyre's, he's got, he's got a few more cards he's going to play. Mm -hmm. I d and I keep going back to it, Cannerts' sister there's yeah. got to be something there. There's something there that just is the missing piece to everyone's motivation in this story. And we just still haven't gone that last nugget. I feel bad for Cannerts in this situation. And he's looking at Dr. McIntyre as a mentor this whole time. And he might be using him as a puppet. He's just stringing him along here. And um, Katie kind of realizes that as Cannerts tells 
his story, his mm-hmm. side of the thing, uh, of the story, and she says, you need to tell somebody. Like, I'm going to die with this secret. You need to tell somebody. Do you think he's going to come uh, out with the truth like that? I think so. Because, uh, and I talked about this with the fans on uh, in the comments the other day, that mm-hmm. I feel that Cannert's... He is going along. It's not just McIntyre as a mentor. He has some kind of personal stake in the cover up. And I think that whatever he was promised or whatever he was supposed to get out of it, he's not going to get it. And when that happens, that's when he's going to help unravel Lamers and McIntyre's plan, whatever it may be. Because there's something something bigger than just we had a virus and it got out. There's just something else in there, I feel like. Something for his sister. It, for Cannards, yes. Yeah, yeah McIntyre, yeah. though, it's it was about more than creating a virus. I feel like mm-hmm. if he is our, you know, number one villain, right? It's, it's tough, viewers. We need some people yeah. to comment on this because it's very, it's a very tricky situation. Yeah, well, Katie did die with that secret for now. Um, I really love the first of all that nightmare was so scary that katie had that she was itching her skin open the sound the the look of the skin peeling right off Mm. everything and quentin falling in a bucket of blood that was i was screaming at my tv that one that one made me uncomfortable Mm -hmm. you know and once again containment with their emmy winning i hope special effects just like oh yeah so um but going back to that, you know, we know Katie's struggle with uh, mental illness and you know, we haven't seen Katie ever have a panic attack despite 16 days locked in. Well, all she the had emotions. a few, kind of. Slightly, yeah, but never one that just, I think she was getting closer to a complete snap. And I think, I think that's what we were, that yeah. was supposed to illustrate. I think she was kind of hallucinating at this point. The yes. pain was so bad and she wasn't taking the pain meds at, right at that particular moment. Right. So she was just hallucinating all the worst possible things that could happen but thank goodness Quentin is not in a pool of blood he is doing well and he's bonding with Jake I really feel like that was a very sweet moment up on the roof when Jake was with Quentin and and telling him you know he was being real with him while also realizing that he's talking to an 11 year old boy who's about to lose his mother and I I feel like that bond is going to go stronger and I think they're going to make it out. I do. And I feel like that's going to be a continuing relationship. I hope so. I hope so, too. I really do. That one, it just, I can't even deal right now after this episode. I'm Mm -hmm. still just in shock. Yeah. And Jake put together the date under the stars watching Happy Feet for Katie. uh, What I really like the most touching part of that is you notice that when Jake walks away, he has the whole constellation in the room, but mm-hmm. he technically only knocks over one star, so it moves. Yeah. So shooting it was like star. Katie's shooting star. And I thought that was so brilliant and so adorable. And I was like, I, I just could. I, I, know. I never say this. I can't even. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, she said, I love you to him too. It finally. That was so sweet. You're going to make me cry, Katie. I know. You're going to cry. Right? You're gonna, Listen, Katie, you're going to make me cry more than containment Katie did. Really? Yes. Stop oh, doing that to me. I cried a lot tonight. Make me relive all that pain. The worst part, too, well, the two parts that I cried the most, which Katie's goodbye with Q. Oh, yes. I, I've got to say, you know, so many props to not just uh, Kristen Gatoski's performance, but also um, young Quentin, just that scene, because they did it once before. Yeah. And it was just illustrated so much their bond, and to go back to it with the hands on the glass, it was like... The tears rolling yes. down both of their faces, it was just a very, you could feel what they were feeling. Yes, that was a very powerful scene. Like, can you imagine just saying goodbye to your mom at 11? Don't, don't make me oh, do that. You will I know. Make me I'm cry. like, I'm really trying to make you cry over here. <laughs> no, and then the second time I was crying, tears were rolling down my face, is when, you know, Jake put a hazmat suit on to go in there and yes. hold her and says, you know, you can say I love you now. Like, I am yeah. holding you. And she, he kind of tried to make her think of the blissful moment that they had before the shower scene. Right. Yeah. Which I wanted to ask you did okay. you think that was really what happened or is she you know because we saw the shower scene definitely happened but yes. all we saw was 
it, you know, the curtain was between them. Right. Do you think that they actually did move that curtain or she was just kind of imagining this is what it would be like to, you know, kiss Jake and, and they love each other and she wanted to go with that thought in her head? I hear you. I hear, understand your question. Mm hmm thinking about it from what I saw I think that it was Katie um, having a very peaceful ending uh, okay. a, a nice dream you know her love for Jake and so yeah I would say that I don't think it was a memory um, okay. I think the shower scene obviously is that moment where they finally just that outburst of emotion obviously mm -hmm. and, and not just uh, saying I love you but really just how crazy they are about each other and she was thinking about that in the end Oh, I know. I kind of hope that it was a memory I and really, they actually did kiss. Because uh, that would I have been the so. only time. It's true. That is true. I, I didn't think of that. Uh, well, I think also for the viewers, we all got to see it because there would be a uprising worse than the one we had on day 13 if we got through all that and we didn't see Katie and Jake kiss. That yeah. would be like, oh, heck no. What a beautiful... Like, Julie Plack, where are you? Yeah. You can't end it that way. What a beautiful way to end this episode, though, yes. with the, the kiss and just going into yeah. white light like that. Oh, yeah. And what I love about it, um, when you think about it, I thought, well, Jake, is he going to be standing at the glass? Is he that? So having him the hazmat suit I didn't expect it and yes the special effects it was tough to watch but when you think about everything that encapsulated just so beautiful yeah oh my gosh absolutely especially when they played the song louder than the coughing <laughs> that was better to watch it like that those sound effects they really they make it well, hard gonna, with the blood coming out I'm not gonna be able to sleep well after that one. <laughs> well so we have to say goodbye to Katie. Very, very, very sad, tough episode. Oh, hold I on, my allergy sack the note. <laughs> hope, I know. I hope this is not the last time we lose a character. Don't, I think we will be losing more before the end. However, knock on wood. let's move on to something, maybe a little bit of a lighter note. Yes. Jana, I am loving her character now. I feel like in the beginning of this whole series, she she got on my nerves with the whole not moving in with Lex. Right. And yes, we were trying to understand her character, but I feel like she's just becoming such a strong individual inside this cordon. No, definitely. And when you think about it, think about the responsibility she's had to bear on her shoulders, mm -hmm. being there for Susie, having to stand up to the people at BitScan. Deliver and also, a baby. Exactly. And take into account, you know, who does she spend, out of all the characters besides Susie, the most time with before everything happened? Lex and Jake. Mm -hmm. She's had to be exposed to a lot of brave characters, and I think that if we get to see a lot of them after containment, if they all do make it, I think we'd see, you know, their bravery, their character rubbed off on her, and mm -hmm. that's what helped her to grow into the character she is too, because she's had to step up to be the leader herself. Yeah. She had to find the hero inside her. Right. That's what I love about that storyline. She did. And I really like, she seems like a perfect match with Lex. I think they have kind of the same moral compass. And um, I thought they re it really showed who she was when she's always the one going to get the supplies. And, and she goes and gets baby stuff for um, For baby. Uh, Teresa. Le yeah, Les yeah. Le Lisa. Yeah, yeah. What is the baby's name now? Leanne. Leanne, Leanne that's right. There it is. Leanne. The uh, comments Teresa, were about to murder me right there. <laughs> Teresa and Xander's baby. Yes. Um, and Trey giving a discount on the baby supplies because he has kids outside the cordon, so he gets it. My, my question, so we've seen two sides of Trey, cold-blooded and warm-hearted. Kind of warm-hearted. Yeah, okay, he doesn't. He could make more money off of that, and as Mikkel so brilliantly illustrated, that's what it's all about, right? But um, do you see a final confrontation happening with Jake at this point? And Trey? Yes. I don't think so. You don't think so? I don't think so. Uh, I personally do, just because uh, I love the depth to Trey's character. Yeah. But I don't think you could be that menacing, that threatening. And also, there's a gun involved. It's one of those few tropes. Like, if you have a, introduce a gun with a character, it has to be fired mm -hmm. by some point in the show. Just like if you have a pregnant woman on a TV series, she has to give that baby. Or she can't just be pregnant at the season finale, too. Yeah. So I feel like 
something's gonna happen where we see Trey's colors change. Or if not, yeah. he's gonna go further to the dark side and, you know, more the side of one of our villains. I feel like if we got a confrontation with Jake and somebody else, it would be Meese. I can see that. Because he's doing some shady things. I really don't even know if he's still in contact with the chief or not. He seems to be running his own business in there, but at the same time, he could be holding secrets, and it might not be his own, totally his own business. Um, but sure. he, he tells Jana at the store when she's getting the supplies that for $5,000 a head, he'll break her out of there. You know, whoever, $5,000 is the price of getting out of the court in. And he seems to know a way out, which I would mm. take his word for it, as he's a cop and he was well aware of the it, places you could get out. I would agree with that. My only question is, you have a secret like that, you haven't gotten out yourself? I mean, when you think of the lesser of two evils, uh, uh. yeah, I mean, when you say what happens day 13 and that outbreak, at what point it's like, are you still trying to collect money and like, you know, pad that nest kind well, of deal then maybe it's because there's a deeper secret and he's still connected with the chief and they're doing something in there he has to be there I think and I it's going to set up for the season finale yeah. next week I think that he's going to take the money and he's going to lead uh, Jana and company somewhere and it's going to be a trap but why can I get a dun 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 <laughs> <laughs> thank you but why <laughs> Because he's sleazy. He doesn't need another reason. And uh, I go back to it. You have a secret like this. You're telling me Trey hasn't gotten it out of you and tried to exploit it. Or you haven't taken it yourself. I mean, you have to have collected enough right. money. You know, he hasn't done anything besides, what, maybe an afternoon destroying the evidence from the from Lex, uh, Leo's friends. Yeah. Well, it's interesting to me that Jana so quickly wants to to go towards that and maybe it's just out of desperation that she's been in there 16 days True. she's tired of it she wants to get out and so it's on her mind you know why wouldn't it cross her mind but she is very quick to she goes and tells Sam at BitScan and right. you know I haven't told the others yet because I don't think they can afford it their yeah. kids whatever the reason I was also thinking false hope yeah well, she, I found it interesting that she only had $2,500 of it she had half of it in her bank account and Sam had 7500 enough for one po for, for the full person and then half for the other person so two people can escape but how does he have more money than she does that seems like a really nice job maybe she spends a lot I'd like to go back to that point y'all still don't think there's something going on with no, him I think he's a good guy how many more clues <laughs> do you need <laughs> I don't he, know. He, he's, he's smart. He, he seems to... Okay, there is smart, then there's <laughs> secretive. And, you know, the we saw the body in the hospital... Uh, in the office. Yeah. We saw, you know... Yeah, but he, those were the tweakers. We don't know that for sure. Listen, that they is, can't open up that can of worms and then the show is ending in two episodes. They can't. They can't yes, do that to can. me. They can't do that to me. They just <laughs> took Katie from us. All bets are off true you know i i have still have him as my wild card and i will tell you this why because it would feel like too easy of an out if mm. he just conveniently happened to have seventy five hundred dollars it's like oh, maybe he... he's just a saver and she's a spender that's what i'm putting it at okay okay and i just yeah. only time will tell that's one true. of us is going to be right. I might be wrong. And I I think the person who's right on this argument, because it's our longest standing mystery. I'll tell you what, if Sam is, uh, and I'll do it on air too. If Sam is just a hero and a nice guy, nothing happens, I will bring you like some gourmet cupcake right here on the desk. Okay. After Buzz TV exclusive. Okay. I love cupcakes. Okay. <laughs> Okay, no, perfect. But, and I want my nice chocolate one and nice oh. plate and everything when I'm correct. And right. he tries to take them out. Okay. Okay. Cupcakes. This is what's at stake here. Yes. <laughs> well, two people that I love seeing every single episode and that I hope nothing bad will ever happen to them are Grandma and Grandpa. Oh, yeah. And it was really, really sweet to see Jana give Grandpa, Bert, you know, yeah. the cart and some groceries and it's so funny because and you pointed this out while we were watching they don't even know who each other are yes and it's funny because they're kind of connected 
his granddaughter is the one that's giving birth in her workplace. Right. And, well, I was going to say, also remember that um, Teresa was supposed to be helping out Bert's wife. Mm-hmm. Like when the things happened that day on day right. one. So it's, it's crazy. But I, I like that because, you know, it's too much when you think about a whole episode that they never talk to each other. Like yeah. the same way when you think about it, how important is Dr. Lomer's character, yet we have never seen her talk to Jake, talk to Katie, mm-hmm. just because of the way that universe is set up. It's just like a travesty. But so. how wonderful that Jana was so kind to him when she, you know, obviously she's going to be kind if yes. she knows it's Teresa's grandfather. She's just kind to a complete stranger who's suffering, whose ankle is broken. He created a splint to save, you know, to be able to try to limp right. around. And um, he ended up getting home to his wife, which was so amazing. That made me tear up a little bit, too. Yes. And I I was worried because at first I thought, oh, my goodness, it's it's a tweaker or it's one of Trey's gang. (sighs) Because I thought, well, we have to on uh, after that, after losing Katie, it's like, well, they got to give us something that's like, oh, my goodness, next week. No, something that's hopeful. That's what I thought. I knew it was going to be him because they got to make us a little bit happy. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Okay. So I hope that, you know, they can just lock themselves in there and stay safe for the rest of the time. No need to go out anymore. Well, I was going to say... Teresa will worry about them and she'll be like, okay, I got to check on them. That's a good point. I did not think of that. I was like, well, he, he brought her the medicine. Things now have to resolve and they have to get help within the next four days. Otherwise, what do they do? Yeah, exactly. They're going to be safe, though. I hope so. So let's talk about Lommers and this entire press conference. Oh, my goodness. Her husband's on her side. He's telling her it's okay to say these things. And initially she ends up saying, you, the people, have been misled. This virus was manipulated in a lab. It was an accident, how it happened. Patient zero is not patient zero. And that Dr. Victor Cannards created it, lied about its origin, and this was not approved from the CDC. Oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? This woman has no heart. She doesn't. And y'all thought I was crazy last week, but you know what? It's. She's blaming it on him when. Well, we're also. It's like, who do we believe kind of thing? Canerts did say, though, and I feel like I believe him when he says this. He said that she called saying this virus got out. So it's clearly not coming from Canerts specifically. Well,. Okay, remember that what did they do essentially immediately after? They cut off any communication he has. Now officially the cordon is 100% contained. There is no communication in or out. I believe they lost the satellite phone at some point. We know it hasn't come up again. So it's like Leo said, they're cutting their losses. And Victor Cannard, he's the easiest one to put away. Uh, Also think about it, Lomers probably doesn't expect Cannard to survive. She probably at this point feels like, let's just let them all die inside of there. Yep. The virus will die out, and then we can go on with life. Yes. And her secrets will die with canards. I mean, that's uh, if that's not, you know, big network villain number one material, what is? Mm, yeah. And Leo Green, he seems to be scared yes. about the whole situation. He thinks that she's going to be coming after Leo and Lex. And I feel like we talked about this last week, too, but... Lex kind of gave Lommers 24 hours to spin this story, mm-hmm. as opposed to if he's calling her out in front of the public, that would have been maybe a better okay. option. She might have been able to spin it on her feet, though. Lommers, you got to give her the credit. She's a very brilliant uh, right. individual, so I feel like she would have gotten out of it. Um, Which makes I didn't Leo make- smart. Yes, I did. I really did not expect Leo to just um, abandon Lex in that way. Because I feel like that's the one, okay, if we're going down, we're going down together. So that one, I was like, you know, that's almost, it's almost that twist that would have made sense that like Leo just disappears now. Mm-hmm. Because then Lex would really have to, he's got to pull out a miracle now to stop Lommers. Well, I thought, so it's weird that he would just leave too. And Lex yes. himself thought it was weird because he said, Leo got me into this mess. So yeah. something's wrong. You know, he cleared out his apartment numbers disconnected but i think he's not leaving him 
he's just got another plan. They have to go about it a different way yes. so that Lammers can't attack them. And they're going to surprise her, you know, mm -hmm. whatever he's got going on, working on in his head, because they deliver the pizza. There's yeah. a note with an address and a key. key. So do you think that's where he's hiding out? I would think so. I mean, I can't think of what else it could be. Uh, it's got to be some sort of safe house. Mm -hmm. Do, I would right now my money is on it's just Leo. He doesn't have a backup with him at that house, or he doesn't have the quote unquote solution with him. So okay. I think he's just doing that to kind of save himself and right. cover his own ass and hide from Lammers, but still help Lex. Okay. And by the way, what is this pizza you know delivery place I in know. Atlanta? I know. I was thinking, does this guy know about this, maybe? <laughs> I don't think he does, but I, Chip is his name. It's the really? same guy, right? Yes, it was yeah. the same guy. And I'm like, you don't ask questions. Well, like, look, I don't know the life of a pizza delivery guy, but apparently you don't ask too many questions. You just take that pie where they say and they pay for it. Well, somebody's got to know something in order to put that stuff on there. I don't know. I, I, I've worked at a pizza place once. All I can say is... There's some weird stuff that weirder stuff than you would expect. So stuff like this going on. <laughs> we'll talk after the show, but let's just <laughs> say you don't want to know the things that sometimes the characters that come into a pizza place would be surprised. Yeah, well, Leo's got this thing with pizza because that's how he contacted the <laughs> NSA contact that he has too. Yeah, <laughs> pizza. I love pizza. Well, um, and he called a major mouthpiece, which was an obvious. Okay, this is from Leo. Well, I love, too, the, the Lex and his dad kind of relationship. So we get the whole backstory. It's implied that they have a very bad relationship. Yeah. It went south a while ago. But I think we're slowly, slowly seeing it get better. It's probably not going to be resolved by the end of the season, but it just looks like it's going in a better direction. And um, Lex's, or Leo's, Lex's dad's pushing him to keep fighting yeah. and stand up and don't let them push you around and and lex is saying you know thank you dad because i get some of this from you yeah. no definitely i when you think about the situation they're in how few people do they actually have that they can trust and lex's dad is one of the few people that lex knows hey no matter what's happened with my dad this is some serious stuff i need his help now and mm -hmm. lex's dad knows that hey whatever happened with my son he needs me now. So this is a very... I, I love it for both characters. Mm -hmm. I did find it um, very ironic how Lex's dad has to give him the pep talk. And then mm -hmm. later on, we see, you know, they say the sign of maturity is being able to give, like, your parent or someone something they didn't give you. And, you know, we see Lex almost, hey, we see how much he's a leader now and mm -hmm. able to get his dad to support him and pick him up. Yeah. And they're going to need that uh, down the stretch. Yeah, for sure. And I, I think they're going to continue to work together. Um, I, something I found very interesting was Chief Besser in all of this. Hmm. They went to go talk to the lieutenant governor because the dad said that the lieutenant governor was the lawyer on his suspension hearing back in the day. Um, fight, he fought like hell, but they lost, unfortunately. Well, he's going to try to get help for Lex through this lieutenant governor. And Chief Besser just cancels the appointment and he says you guys just don't know when to give up you don't know when you're beaten well i mean what is he doing uh, real quick i want to point out that i'm okay if one more certain police chief falls into containment <laughs> yeah but um <laughs> yeah okay here's the thing wasn't this guy you know already anti lamers last week kind of but we didn't really explore that we just saw the look on his face when lex was telling I him th yeah lamers is lying to you she's not telling you the truth yeah and then he kind of he went to lamers and said i have the chief on my side and maybe he really didn't but he thought he was going to have him on his side i get what you're saying and lamers just quickly turned that around and probably put the blame on lex and made the chief believe once again that she's doing the right thing in that case, you know, I feel like the chief, there's something bigger in it for him. Now, mm -hmm. obviously, he's got a higher position of power. How long does this last if when containment will end, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't mean it, or not the show I'm implying in this case, but, you know, the situation right. inside those fences will go down. 
what happens to the chief after that? You know, does he go back to just his local precinct? You know, so there must be something more involved. And I think that that's going to be a string that one of our villains tugs on to control him down the stretch. That's really a hard thing to think about, too, is if you are kind of being immoral in some of these situations and after all this is over, you're just going to go back to your job. Like some people are not going to want that to happen. It's just, just a terrible situation. Well, what I'm thinking, what's in it for the chief? Is it the money? Is it the position? The position. Also, keep, yeah, keep in mind, you know, it's very easy to do these things. He has not been toward the cordon, I don't believe, all season. So he hasn't had to see those faces. And right. Like we, when we question why does Lammers do what she does, why is the chief? Well, he hasn't had to see it yet. Yeah, that's true. Well, I think we covered everything in this episode, so let's jump into some predictions. And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. So, in the previews, all next episode looks like Mies is breaking people out. There's some arguments on whether it's going to be a struggle or if it's true, what's going on there. Um, Janice obviously told Susie, which I like because it doesn't seem like Jana to just up and leave. I delivered a baby and I'm going to leave my best friend. That's that's a great plan. No, she's going to let everybody know about the situation. Exactly. And um, I wonder if they're going to try to talk Mies down on his price. It's you a know. possibility. But uh, that looks like we got Lex saying this is twisted. Doesn't really give us much with that. Um, Captain, so I, well, I mean, I know he is Major Lex Carnahan, but yeah. in that moment, he seemed more like Captain Obvious. <laughs> yeah, this is twisted. Yeah, well, I think he's talking to Leo, possibly. That, that I would hope so. Well, I'm really sad that we're not going to get a scene with Katie and Jake. Yeah, That's been a major that, part of the episode this whole season. Yeah, that that hurts. I, w- I really wanted them to make it through to mm-hmm. the end. Um, so just... That hurts. Um, Prediction, though. uh, Man, I really want to say that Mies is going to... He's manipulating Janna, and I think it's all to get money. I do feel like, unfortunately, we might lose one one of our characters. They're going to put in a lot of real peril, you know, and that's going to set it up. I I would think Janna, just because when you think about Lex... Maybe he's finally got to get in there and get the job done himself. Jake, he just lost Katie. He can't lose someone else he loves. Right. He can't do that to Lex. He can't do that. You know, he knows Susie needs Jenna. Yeah. So I feel like she would be, after we've also grown to love her, I feel like the she's going to go be or to just be put in, in danger. danger. Okay. Now, like I said, n- nobody is safe. And uh, we saw that this week. So mm-hmm. next week... It's the second to last episode, Mm -hmm. and they always set that up as like all the pieces get set, and then the season finale, the dominoes fall. But the setups are at their best in these upcoming episodes, and that's what I love about it. I can't wait. I know. It's going to be a good episode. Yes. I'm excited, too. Well, where can everybody talk to you on Twitter and on social media until next week? Hey, guys. We could talk about containment. I love talking about it with you guys. At Double G on TV. Love talking to you. And you can find me on Twitter at Katie E. E. Campbell. That's Katie with three E's Campbell. Instagram at Katie Campbell 13 and YouTube.com slash Katie Campbell online. And we will see you guys next week. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.